O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who by the ineffable mercy have been pleased through the labors of your priest, St. Junipero Serra, to count many American peoples within your church, grant by his intercession that we may so join our hearts to you in love as to carry always and everywhere before all people the image of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. Then truly will the Lord, the God of hosts, be with you as you claim. Hate evil and love good, and let justice prevail at the gate. Then it may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will have pity on the remnant of Joseph. I hate, I spurn your feast, says the Lord. I take no pleasure in your solemnities. Your cereal offerings I will not accept, nor consider your stall-fed peace offerings. Away with your noisy songs. I will not listen to the melodies of your harps, but if you would offer me burnt offerings, then let justice surge like water and goodness like an unfailing stream. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Hear my people and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, I am. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your field. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. For mine are all the animals of the forest, beasts by the thousand on my mountains. I know all the birds of the air, and whatever stirs in the plains belongs to me. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. If I were hungry, I should not tell you, for mine are the world and its fullness. Do I eat the flesh of strong bulls, or is the blood of goats my drink? To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits for his creatures. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine. And the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, where they drowned. The swine herds ran away, and when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord. There's one thing that this gospel that we just heard reveals is there is a sacred hierarchy in this world that God has created. And at the top of this hierarchy, or at the pillar, is the human person, made in the very image and likeness of God, worthy of salvation, worthy of freedom. Now, the two demoniacs are men who are possessed by evil spirits, by evil demons. And these evil demons, um, if we hear um, the account from Mark, we hear that they are called legion, meaning that there were many evil spirits in the uh, men that were possessed. And as Jesus frees those men, we have this very strange um, request that the demons make of asking to go into the swine herd. Why would they want to go there, number one? And two, why would the Lord Jesus allow that? One, when it comes to the demons, we are told they are savage. And um, when they possess a being, uh, you know, if they possess a human being, a human being is a person of intelligence, so they can exercise a certain amount of control over a human being who has willfully given themselves over to a spirit. However, when it comes to animals, these are irrational creatures. Um, They act on instinct, and they do not um, have the same capacities as a human person. So if a spirit possesses an irrational animal, it has less control. That is the, the, the demon. In any event, what it does reveal is these demons called legion, their purpose is destructive in nature. All they want to do is savage and destroy. And when they go into the swine herd, um, that the swine herd goes mad and drives headlong over the cliff, um, as we hear in other, um, as we hear in the gospel today, is an example of what the evil spirit's uh, goal is. Savagery, destruction, um, at any level. The other thing that the uh, gospel reveals to us is that these spirits, these evil spirits, were real. These two men called demoniacs were not just um, brigands um, who were seeking um, to enrich themselves. No, they were truly possessed. And the fact that the swine herd um, went mad after they were possessed by these demons is evidence of that reality that they were in fact real, and that they were um, uh, causing great harm to 
the two men that were possessed by them. What this also reveals, however, is the hearts of men are not always so inclined to recognize the sacred hierarchy that God has uh, put up. You know, in fact, they asked that Jesus would leave instead of rejoicing and celebrating that two men have been freed from evil spirits. They asked the Lord to leave. Why did they ask the Lord to leave? Well, the swineherds have lost their, uh, their, their herd, and therefore they've suffered economic loss. So economic, economic considerations rise higher than uh, the worth of these men. Of course, in God's eyes, um, the salvation of these men, their freedom from bondage to the evil one and evil spirits is of paramount importance. That importance, of course, is shown uh, even more so as the Lord Jesus himself willfully allows himself to be taken and undergo the punishment for sin, um, as which is death on the cross. He dies freely to save all mankind from uh, the evil one, from bondage into sin. And uh, that shows us the infinite worth of the human person, at least as the Lord God sees it. We human beings um, have been struggling to reconcile ourselves to this reality, to this truth of the person made in the image and likeness of God, of the command that the Lord gives to love the neighbor as we love our own self. So that is the challenge for us today, to recognize the goodness of every single person, that they are worthy of redemption, that they are worthy of knowing Christ. And that too, my friends, is something that we celebrate in the saint today, Saint Junipero Serra. He's been in the news lately, mostly because um, the mob um, desiring to take down as many uh, icons of the history of this nation as they can uh, beset the statue of St. Junipero Serra in San Francisco in Missionary Park. Um, and they were successful in tearing that statue down. Um, but why, why would they attack St. Junipero Serra? Of course, we might ask ourselves, why would uh, the mob attack Abraham Lincoln or the statue in Madison of the Norwegian, uh, whose name for, uh, escapes me at this moment, uh, but that Norwegian died in the Civil War, um, was fighting uh, against uh, South, the South. Uh, he was an ardent abolitionist seeking to free the slaves, and yet the statue of him was taken down. Perhaps it is just ignorance, um, or perhaps it is something more. In the case of St. Junipero Serra, what was his sin, his crime? His crime was bringing Christ to California bringing Christ to the indigenous peoples, bringing them um, to worship the one true God, to embrace Christianity. And that is why some of those people opposed to him um, have stored, torn his statue down, because they see the coming of uh, the Europeans um, as the destruction of their cultures. Um, and, and so that is uh, uh, the sad reality of course, um, in addition to um, the difficult things that came along with those who followed after Christopher Columbus, there was one great thing that came, and that was the faith. That was Christ. You know, when Christopher Columbus came uh, to uh, uh, the, uh, what we now call the West Indies, those, that island of change in the Caribbean, um, and when the, the other, Mexic or the other Sp Spanish uh, conquistadors followed, what did they find when they came? Um, they found many different peoples and many different peoples at war with one another. And they also found the Aztecs. The Aztecs practiced human sacrifice. They oppressed their neighbors. And um, the coming of um, the Europeans did put an end to that, and that was a good. They also brought Christ. And in fact, in the mystery of evangelization, when Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared, Millions, millions embraced um, the faith. And what did they find when they embraced the faith? What did they find in Our Lady of Guadalupe? They found the mother of God, the mother of the Savior. 
And what was so remarkable about Our Lady of Guadalupe is that when Our Lady appeared, she appeared as one of them, as one of the people, just thus revealing that the faith is for all peoples, of all nations, of all tongues, and that it is good to know Christ. It is good to be Christian. It is better to be Christian than to not be. And that is the truth and the fact that we believe in. It is the truth and the fact that is at the heart of all missionary efforts. It is a supreme good to know and love Christ and to be baptized and to be part of the church, the body of Christ, better than not being outside of that reality. So my friends, let us pray for um, our faith and let us pray for uh, missionaries and let us pray for a revival in that confidence uh, that we have in the goodness of Christianity, of the goodness of knowing Christ and how, like it liberated the two demoniacs, uh, how it liberates uh, people whenever they come to truly know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus. Formed now by God's holy word, let us turn to him in faithful prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Hebda, and all who guide the church, we pray to the Lord. That those who lead nations will be true peacemakers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, the death penalty, and all crimes against humanity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who have problems of doubt or suffering may receive the word of God and be converted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing death, May they know true faith and inner peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Darlene Johnston, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be, stand, be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Juniper, O Sarah, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Junipero Sarah, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, the save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, says the Lord. What you hear, whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Junipero Sarah never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. 